We are here at the Oak Ridge National Laboratory just outside of Knoxville, Tennessee, and we're sitting here because the Department of Energy today will unveil the world's most powerful supercomputer right here at Oak Ridge. With me today right now is Energy Secretary Rick Perry, also Ginny Rometty, the CEO of IBM, and Jensen Huang, the CEO of NVIDIA. Thank you guys so much for joining us here on CNBC. Perhaps Secretary Perry, we'll start with you because this is now the crown jewel of technological achievement in mankind, and it's right here in Tennessee. Take us through what this means for the Energy Department and the U.S. government. Well, let me just say very quickly that, uh, and, and the world will change quickly, and uh, by 2021, the, even a faster uh, computer, a more powerful computer, will be over at uh, Argonne, and then a year later, Back here at Oak Ridge will be even a more powerful computer than that. And this computer, Summit, eight times faster than the computer that sets here today, uh, the Titan. I mean, fascinating things. This is nothing less than world changing, whether it's in the energy sector, whether it's in the cybersecurity sector, whether it's in the material sector, and importantly, I think, across the board, in the health sector. Now, Ginny, as we talk about IBM's role. Yes. If we were talking about building a home, you would be considered the general contractor. Yes. If you were a defense contractor, you'd be prime yes. on this project. Yes. So what exactly is IBM contributing in the, in the whole process of technology here? What is it adding to this supercomputer? And how is IBM going to benefit as a company from it? Well, first, I'm very appreciative of the secretary and our ability to work on this project and very proud, but all of us are. So we not only were, as you call the prime, we are the one that designed this. We have built this. We have brought in partners, and so this is really one of our greatest achievements. This is the fastest. It is the smartest supercomputer. So think of it as two in one. And so with Secretary... This is Watson's grandchild. This is, yeah, this is, that's right, Watson's grandchild. Because <laughs> uh, this is 200 petaflops, and what that means, 10, 15 zeros. And people usually talk about supercomputers as fast, but this is also when we say smart. Think of the AI side. So this is two in one. It's a paradigm that we're able to do both. We were with the researchers earlier this morning. An experiment that might have taken 27 years to 13,000 years, they can do in a day. And so that unlocks, just as the secretary said, you will have new compounds, new you know, cures for cancer. You'll look at new medicines. They're going to do research here on Alzheimer's. And so this, to me, is one of our proudest moments. For this to be in the world, the fastest and the smartest ever in this period of time, and four years to build. So very proud partners that were here. And I will tell you, for us already, um, you know, the old paradigm was when you did research work together, it would take a long time to bring it to commercial marketplace. Uh, today already, if you want to call it Mini Summit, the name of this is Summit, but Mini Summit is already out with our commercial customers. And so Mini Summit is in four of the six top North American banks already today. So think of it for fraud analytics, trade surveillance, all work underway already. Now, Jensen, mm -hmm. the supercomputing concept really got accelerated with the addition of technology from companies like yours in the semiconductor space. So as we talk about the artificial intelligence applications and the, the other autonomous driving, everything else, all these buzzwords we throw out there, how is NVIDIA kind of defining artificial intelligence? And what exactly does this accomplishment here mean for the world of AI? Yeah, Summit is a new breed of computers. This is the beginning of a new trend of how computers are going to get built in the future. Uh, artificial intelligence, in a simple way, is a machine that can learn and it writes software that writes software by itself. And the software is so complex that no humans could possibly write it. And, and what's really exciting about, about the work that is done here is Oak Ridge was the world's first supercomputing center that took a risk on NVIDIA's GPU accelerated computing. This is ground zero. And as a result of that, take, taking that chance, uh, so, uh, so Oak Ridge was able to build Titan, which is the fastest supercomputer at its time in 2012, five times the energy efficiency of anything that was out there at the time. And leveraging that same architecture, uh, we were now able to build Summit. The thing that's really cool about Summit is that it fuses, for the very first time, traditional high-performance computing with this new way of doing computing we call deep learning. And we invented a brand new processor called the Volta Tensor Core GPU, the first of its kind. And we already saw results that are based on the Tensor Core GPU. And it's going to result in groundbreaking work. You know, now for the very first time, we're able to use uh, numerical methods from first principles based on knowledge that we have earned from the past 
Um, but we're also able to study data, large amounts of data, and the computer will go and figure out and detect and learn what are the important features to recognize and how to connect the dots of what seemingly are unrelated phenomenons to discover new knowledge. And so this, this new, new class of computers, this fusion of high performance computing, what, what Ginny said, fastest, as well as AI computing, which is smartest, this fusion of computers is going to be a new breed of computers. You, you know, John, it, Jensen makes a very good point, I think, because collectively, four years ago, many of these things didn't exist. So four years ago, when we started our work, IBM had the processor not, process, uh, Power 9 processors, Jensen the GPUs, but we had to invent things as an example to take all this data in. We have the fastest ability to interconnect these things together. And think of it as the hose that brings all of the data in, because here lives the biggest trove of, as an example, veterans data is here. And so that invention of what had to be done, that hose to pull the data in simultaneously into these processors to do what it did, uh, all that I think is a great tribute to, Senator, to Secretary Perry's team. That was invention with our teams that had to be done and done on time. Yeah. Now, now, Secretary, I mean, we've tossed around words like fastest, most powerful, most complex. That implies that there is competition, and we know that there is. Yeah. And like the other big thing that's happening right now, this is about us versus China, the two biggest economies in the world and the two most arguably technologically superior out there. So what does the U.S. have to do with this kind of technology that positions us competitively against a, a country like China? How do we win, and what does it mean for Americans? Practicality uh, of, of what's going on here is American citizens want to see their tax dollars being spent appropriately. There's not a better example of that in a public-private partnership between the DOE and these two great private sector partners and then the product that we're getting here. This competition's real. It's not going away. The Chinese have the two fastest computers in the world. Uh, the Swiss are next and I think the Japanese and, and we're in fifth place. But with this opening today, we're going to move back up to the number one spot. But you can bet our friends in China are working very hard uh, to put themselves back in there. But competition's a good thing. It pushes us to excel. It's not comfortable. Uh, but that's what Americans want to see their tax dollars used for. No better place to do that than at our national labs. Now, you know, I, you said something about Oak Ridge being the, uh, the crown jewel of the national labs. There's 16 other labs out there that would take uh, a little bit of uh, maybe a fence with that. Uh, and I'm not going to split that baby and pick my favorite one. But there are 17 national labs that are out there doing the most fascinating work in the world. Uh, for instance, the computing going on in the Summit computer as we're sitting here speaking is dealing with veterans' health in a program at the Department of Energy working in partnership with the, uh, the VA uh, called Artificial Intelligence Big Data Initiative. And we've got massive amounts of data of which yeah. Jenny was talking about that historically we couldn't get all that data pushed through the pipes and because of what Jensen's company's done, we're going to be able to give solutions to challenges on the health side, not just to veterans, but to a soccer mom whose child has been concussed multiple times, uh, to the Alzheimer's victims, Alzheimer's. that we're going to find the cures for that because we have the computing capacity now, because of the work that we've done collectively here, and that's exactly what Americans want to see their government doing working efficiently, working with the private sector, making this country great again. This the, is the about race, The race is on. There's no question the race is on. And the, but this is not the space race. This is the race to knowledge. For, for a country to, to, to build the world's most important instruments for the discovery of knowledge. And that's the ultimate race, and, and I think it's just super important. And, and don't forget that actually the uh, sibling here of Summit, Sierra, is right behind going into Lawrence Livermore, one of the other labs on DOE, and then right behind that is EXA. And so there is a pipeline here that is coming through, and I think of it as well, not just a race to knowledge, this is a race of science. And I hope uh, you're, you walked around here today, bring your child to work day. I hope we incent a lot of kids now to go into, into into STEM, into science, into math, when they see what they're going to be able to solve being here. So, Ginny, we, Secretary Perry brought up the idea of tax dollars being effectively spent. This is also about shareholder resources at IBM being effectively spent. 
So how is it that shareholders and investors will reap the benefits of what you are doing here? What do you think investors are missing about the IBM story right now? Well, Can IBM be a growth story because of this? Yes, yes. Well, as you already know, we did return to growth. And so part of this is what this is all about is believing that to be competitive in the future, the companies that can learn the fastest are going to be competitive. And that means using all of this data. Outlearning is going to be your biggest competitive advantage. So you need both people with industry expertise, which a lot of that had to go in here when you listen to the secretary talk about understanding medicine, understanding energy, materials. You have to have the kind of hardware and processors and software. The IBM Power 9, available commercially now to our clients, is the kind of processor built for AI. That is at the heart. You walk down the aisles, as the secretary did at a summit, it's IBM on every single box down there with our GPUs from NVIDIA inside there with us. And so that processor is part of what goes into the commercial market space as well. So it's all about reinventing IBM for a data, an era of data and artificial intelligence, that that's what we're all going to compete on. And so I think this is not only a great investment uh, on our part, it's built on decades of work that we've done. This wasn't just across four years. And by the way, it positions us now for the future and as well as quantum surfaces, blockchain underneath it. And so off we go. Jensen, this is also about your company and its position for the future as well. Mm -hmm. Some say that you're only gaming. We know that maybe, maybe that's not the case. Some say it's only about autonomous vehicles. Some say it's only about blockchain slash cryptocurrencies. What's your philosophy about how you want to position your company going forward, given what you've developed here at Summit? The architecture for Summit is going to be the way computers are built in the future. Every supercomputer in the future will be GPU accelerated. This architecture, which fuses traditional high-performance computing and AI, is going to be the way that computing is done in the future. It's a multi-billion dollar industry. The whole industry, of course, of computing is gigantic. And I think that, that, that um, with this as a first starting point, this is going to be the beginning of some pretty exciting growth ahead. This is the way computers are going to be built in the future. Now, we talk about the future, Secretary Perry. America's energy future is the reason why you are on point for everything that happens with policy in this country. Oak Ridge is a small part of that story. What is your view or philosophy on America's energy portfolio going forward? And does that click with President Trump's view? How are you positioning America for energy supremacy? Well, we're, we're approaching that now, and it's because of what the motto that I like to use, innovate, don't regulate. And you see innovators in the private sector generally working with our national labs. I'll give you a great example of it, hydraulic fracturing and the way that we're able to uh, now use LNG, all 30 different countries in five continents are receiving American LNG. Ten years ago, they told us they'd found it all. There wasn't any more. And if you even found any, it was going to be prohibitively expensive to produce. Not the case because there were private sector innovators, George Mitchell in the case of hydraulic fracturing, who didn't buy into that. There were people that told these two, you're taking a massive chance putting this computer in because you don't have the pipeline between them. They innovated. So I think the story here, American innovators, American technology has led through our history, it will continue to, Government needs to get out of the way, not be in their way. Yeah, we got our role to play, to protect, to do the things that we need to do, but don't be in the way. So I'm excited about an all of the above energy strategy that it is developing our renewables, that continue to use our fossil fuels, looking for new forms of energy that Summit is going to be able to deliver in the form of does battery that, storage. Does that mean that the U.S. will be an exporter of energy in whatever form to the rest of the world in the years to come? And a great point that you make in all forms. Yes, we're already uh, exporting our fossil fuels. We're exporting our technology to China and to India for clean coal. I mean, the, the technology that's going to be coming out of our national labs is coming out of the private sector. Stunning innovations that are going to continue to happen. And uh, as long as we never buy into that, well, you just have innovated the last thing that can be innovated. Because these, these two are proof that that's a fallacy. Ginny, what is the thing that has you most excited? I mean, Summit's a, a very large achievement. What is it that investors 
and the American public and the world public should know about the IBM story? What has you the most juiced about what's going to happen in the future? This is, this is a great symbol of our ability to change how the world works. And together we're going to solve what are some of the most important problems. This was not illustrative. We are going to work on Alzheimer's and finding the cures. We are going to look at new materials for energy. So this is not illustrative. Those are real projects going on. There's 14 approved that are working here. And that is what we're going to solve. So I view, and I always say, we both help change how the world works and we help change how society works. And so that is what you're going to need daily for. And if I look, whether it's making the banks safer, whether it's making them more efficient, whether it's helping them to the cloud, whether it's in healthcare, what we're doing already, 150,000 patients, Watson for Oncology. This is all about, I think, solving some of the problems that can't be solved and allowing people to innovate in the way that they have not done so before, all based on data. This is reinvention for an era of data and AI that's going to go on for decades in front of us. Jensen, one last one to you here. Where are you going to spend resources? Where, where is NVIDIA's money going to be spent the most going forward? Is it AI? Is it gaming? Is it crypto? Is it what, what is it? What's going to be the, the primary focus for NVIDIA? Artificial intelligence is the single most powerful technology force the world has ever seen. We are going to dedicate ourselves to continue to advance this form of computing. You saw the first version of it today with Summit. You're going to see a whole bunch of other computers built like this. The Tensor Core GPU that we invented is going to revolutionize computing. And these software, these computers are going to be able to develop software that drives productivity in industries, gigantic industries, from transportation to healthcare to finance to business, all over the world. And it's going to drive so much, so much productivity that it's going to stimulate these industries. And, and I think that. Um, uh, the work that we're doing together here uh, with Summit is just the first of its kind, but there's going to be a whole bunch more computers like this. This is, this is going to be the way computers are built in the future. And Mr. Secretary, we'll end with you because this is an achievement for the Energy Department here. I would be remiss if I didn't ask. There is a very large summit that's happening next week between President Trump and the leader of North Korea. A lot of that focus has to do with nuclear talks or denuclearization. You are the energy secretary of the U.S. with purview over the nuclear policy. How active are you in that particular discussion that's happening with President Trump right now and energy policy and nuclear weapons policy with North Korea? Yeah, very much so. Uh, the president, uh, his team, uh, they know historically, whether it was in Libya, whether it was in Iraq, whether it was in Iran, uh, some other areas around the world where a denuclearization has gone on before, that the Department of Energy plays a very important role. We're the agency that has the technology to be able to verify, for instance, we're the folks who will uh, actually go in. You know, hopefully uh, we'll be successful with this, the President will be successful in his negotiations, and the United States can play a, uh, a singularly important role in helping uh, the non-proliferation, if you will, of nuclear materials around the world. A great uh, opportunity, uh, but the Department of Energy will be uh, very actively engaged with that. We uh, look forward to the opportunity. Oak Ridge National Lab will play a uh, very fascinating role as well. Will you be going to Singapore? Uh, I will not. Uh, I'm going to be down in uh, uh, another part of the world doing a G7 with my uh, my counterpart. So, uh, uh, you know, I wish them luck. We'll be uh, uh, we'll be watching and uh, prayers up that uh, the world will be a safer place because of what the president's doing. Well, Energy Secretary Rick Perry, also IBM CEO Ginny Rometty, and NVIDIA CEO Jensen Huang, thank you so much for joining us here on CNBC today. My pleasure. Thank you.